Welcome to Slashdot Media's SourceForge podcast, and thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Sydney Shepard, here at SourceForge and Slashdot Media. The SourceForge podcast is where we discuss software and technology with leaders and change makers in tech. And joining us today, we have Scott Lassane, the Vice President of Sales at APS Payroll, a cloud-based HR and payroll platform. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Thanks a lot for having me, Sydney. I'm excited to talk to you today. Yeah, same. So to start, could you just introduce yourself to everyone listening and give a little overview of APS Payroll and the solutions that you offer? Yeah, for sure. So again, like you said, Scott Lassane, VP of Sales. I've, I've actually been with APS for about 16 years. Um, and even though I run our department now, I've, I've really held a lot of positions in our sales department, account executive, manager. Um, and so I know a lot about our company. I have a lot of passion for our industry. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited to continue to grow APS uh, and get our solution in front of as many um, customers as possible. So That's really awesome. our solution, just think about it as, as companies have to manage their workforce and they have to manage everything from hire to retire. And that could include uh, applicant tracking, digital onboarding, of course, payroll, time and labor management, benefits performance management, anything that a company needs to manage their workforce, APS provides that solution. That's awesome. That's wild. You've been there for a very long time. That's cool that you've been in multiple different positions. Like you said, definitely helps you get like a better understanding of the company as a whole. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'd love to hear a little more about how APS technology streamlines payroll and HR for, you know, small businesses, medium sized businesses, and what would you say makes your platform stand out from the rest? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of options in our space. And so I think yeah. that we have to look at it as why do, why do clients come to APS? And we, we analyze a lot of data. We look at a lot of um, reviews out there and, and what clients are saying. And really there's, there's, there's three main differentiators of how, we can streamline payroll and HR processes. And then number one, a lot of our clients come to us looking to centralize data. They could have an applicant tracking system. They could have a separate attendance application. Their benefits could be handled by their broker and they're, they're either growing, scaling, or trying to just manage their workforce more effectively. And so they come to APS to centralize. And also in our space, um, there are a lot of tech options, like I mentioned, but adoption across our industry is pretty low. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, companies that we compete with offer a lot, but maybe haven't built their system the most logical way. So employees, they get into it, users get into it and they can't adopt it. And so it goes from software to, to shelfware. And then I think the third thing to discuss is that really support is, is deprioritized or really non-existent in our industry. And so when clients come to APS, they benefit from a single system design so that all of the, the workforce, workforce and the processes flow in this um, streamlined technology. And that's what really makes us stand out. Our clients can centralize data. They can benefit from a highly adoptable system and they can be partnered with a company that prioritizes support just as much as we prioritize technology. Yeah, that's awesome. That's uh, very helpful for, I'm sure, especially the smaller size businesses or, you know, companies who are starting out to have everything in one spot because you're already trying to manage like so many different things when, when you're getting going. That's right. That's right. It, it's companies are trying to, to, especially post COVID to, to yeah. make money, be effective, grow, and you have to manage your workforce. So you really need a system that can make that as easy as possible on, yeah. on the business. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. And kind of going off of that, um, I know you work with, you know, small to mid-sized businesses, but what type of companies or industries would you say typically get the most value from APS payroll? And, you know, is there a specific example of a company that, um, you know, you, you really impacted? Yeah, absolutely. So we are, we are industry agnostic. However, over the years, we've found that we really provide a lot of value to certain industries. Uh, to name a few, um, nonprofit organizations, faith-based, uh, certain micro-verticals in healthcare, education, manufacturing, and then financial and professional services. 
those are different industries across the range mm -hmm. uh, of industries within our ICP, but they all have specific needs. And on yeah. top of those needs that are specific to that industry, there's also personas that, that differ at each organization. So if you look at the data that we have in our system, Sydney, finance, HR, operations, IT, C-suite, all need to have access to the information in our system, but all have different priorities and objectives. Yeah, um, totally. So not only industries that we work well with, but also the personas within, I think it's important to discuss. And yeah. um, from, from a, a, an example that sticks out in my head, like I mentioned, I've, I've, I've worn a lot of hats. So mm -hmm. uh, I remember as an account executive, uh, I worked trying to, to get a, a 500 employee nonprofit organization uh, onto our services. And, and this company was with a very large publicly traded company. And, um, you know, when you're going from a large public name to more of a bootstrap private boutique company like APS, there can be concerns about risk. And uh, what they found out after getting through implementation, this organization went from a payroll process that took days to a payroll process that took hours. And they achieved that by, like I mentioned earlier, centralizing workflows and processes into our system and then driving adoption of the software through trench managers and employees. Uh, and it's not uncommon for our clients to come to us and say they saved X hours or they went from days to hours. And I think it yeah. goes back to how we, we know what companies we work well with and we built a system that allows them to see that efficiency. That's awesome. Days to hours. That is very, very helpful. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure, I mean, anyone, no matter what industry or position you're in can understand how how busy days and weeks get um, just trying to get one task done. Right. And I'm just thinking about like certain tasks that I have, if I could shrink that from days to hours, that would just be magical. So <laughs> that's right. yeah, I'm sure that's a big game changer for them. That's awesome. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, these days, real time payroll processing and employee access are more important than ever. Um, and, you know, how do you guys help companies stay on top of those critical functions? Yeah, payroll never slows down. Uh, yeah. I remember when I first got into this industry, my dad told me, uh, you, you better not mess with someone's paycheck, right? <laughs> because <laughs> that's something that we all care about. Every single yep. employee of an organization cares that their data is accurate and it's on time. And especially post pandemic with more of a remote workforce, employees mm -hmm. can be all over the map. And, and you can work for a company and their corporate might be six states away. So I think the main thing, Sydney, is, is self-serve. Uh, the idea of employee self-serve gives employees autonomy. And so they can go look at their, their pay stub or request PTO or have access to their benefit statement or e-sign a document. Um, they can also be very engaged with the company. Um, and you're providing that, that autonomy, but you're also providing delegation. Uh, because for someone to receive an accurate paycheck, there are there's certain onus on 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 the employee to um, you know make sure they're clocking in or requesting the right PTO, e signing their time card, and mm -hmm. self serve really is that 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 vehicle that can help get um, a business to um, a more efficient state, and also you know, pay payroll in itself needs to be very flexible. So different states have different pay laws um, for end of pay period and first check date or termination pay requirements when you have to get an employee their, their final pay stub. So we offer our clients a lot of flexibility with the ability to create prepays, unscheduled run, and then a concept called expedited payroll that allows a client to submit a payroll the next day or even same day in certain situations if there's an uh-oh or a fire or maybe a termination that needs to be paid out, for example, in California, same day. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, in addition to that, um, like for, you know, employees going in on kind of on the other side, as businesses grow and evolve, you know, their needs for scalability, flexibility, all of that for, you know, payroll and HR management tend to change. So how do you help um, you know, companies adapt to those changing requirements for the people that are in those positions working yeah. on that. That's a great question. I think that when you provide software and service 
if you're not listening to your customer, then you're not mm -hmm. continuing to evolve for them. Yes, totally. And, and so, um, again, we compete with a lot of companies in our space that are, that are very large and, and publicly traded and that's fine. That's no knock on them, but the larger the company gets, the further they can get away from their clients. And that's one thing I've been very proud of over my tenure here is that, that APS hasn't lost sight of that. So, um, I'll name a few initiatives, uh, of course. Um, all of our clients can engage with us via their CSAT or NPS responses. So we have surveys within our system. Every time a ticket's closed, there's a survey. Every 90 days, our customers are asked how satisfied they are. And we have a team that takes those responses. And if there are challenges or opportunities, that we have a team that engages those clients uh, specifically to understand how we can be better for them. We also um, have a, what we call the, the voice of the customer initiative where we interview clients within our target uh, industries that you asked about earlier uh, consistently so that we, under, we understand how are we solving their problems, where are we not, and as they're growing and scaling, what do they see that they could benefit from us? We also ask, are you using any other software to manage parts of the workflow? And, and mm -hmm. more often than not, so that we understand, we find out that a client is using another software that we have that service for. So yeah. um, we can understand, identify, and we engage our clients through our application and those initiatives to um, continually meet those needs. And um, at the end of the day, we are in our own ICP. We're a company around 200 employees um, in uh, financial and professional services. So we also look at our own use case. Where are we struggling? Mm -hmm. Where are we, yeah. how, how are we scaling? and um, what challenges do we see and so um, we also use ourselves to understand how we can be better for our clients i love that <laughs> that's great i mean it totally makes sense i feel like i don't think about that i'm sure a lot of people don't think about that but just looking in um you can find little holes to fill um and that's great too i think there's so many different products or platforms that i've used you know where um sometimes it's hard to get help or feedback. So that's having that 90 day check-in. That's really a good, good idea. I mean, for your clients and also for you guys just to um, continue to improve. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you lose um, touch with your client, you're going to lose touch with um, where they're going. And it's, it's very yeah. important for us. Yeah. And I feel like the more you stay in contact with a, a client, the better the relationship is. Um, 100%. Yeah, totally. And you kind of mentioned, you know, some competition um, and how you guys are a little different. So could you go in a little more detail, like when you're talking to some potential clients, what are some of the other options that they're considering and um, what are some more ways that you guys set yourself apart from that competition? So in our, in our addressable market, we probably have between 10 and 12 direct competitors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the biggest, um, the industry giants are going to be, you know, ADP, Paychex, but we yeah. also have Paycor, Paycom, Paylocity, and, and UKG. There, there are a myriad of, of technology solutions in our space. Um, and where we differentiate is really our best in breed support structure and our extremely usable and intuitive software. Um, so I, I like to use an analogy every once in a while. So, um, a car is a car, right? There, there yep. are many cars out there. There, there are um, cars across the spectrum. There are manufacturers that that offer different models. But there's there's a reason. I don't want to offend anybody, but there's a reason <laughs> that a Toyota or a Honda will outlive a Range Rover. And it's all about the design of the components of the car and how they work together to perform and function properly. And yeah. so it's really the same thing in our space that there are some really good looking and attractive technology offerings in our space. But there is a reason why a lot of our competitors churn at the rate that they do, because when clients get in and they understand the components and how the software actually works, it results in a, a lackluster experience. Yeah. And so it's very common for, uh, us to be the the vendor that a company chooses to um, have that long lasting relationship with because maybe they've seen what 
how the Range Rover functions. And, <laughs> yeah. and they say, I need a really solid and usable tech, but I also want to be heard. And I want to have a, a voice on the other end of the phone if I have a, an issue. Um, yeah. And we've, we've built a business on those two pillars. That's cool. I like that analogy. It makes it very easy to understand. And also, I'm a, a Toyota girl, so <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, it's, it's funny. I, I just was getting something on my car fixed the other day and the car like repair man was asking me if I'll ever sell my Toyota. And I was like, no, I have no reason to like, it, it's a great car. It'll last forever. Yeah, so that's I, right. I very much so relate. To that. Yeah. We can just nerd out on Toyotas. I, um, I have a foreigner now. Very nice. Pro- and, uh, I ju- last year, my son turned 16 and I gave him my 2006 foreigner and nice. I expect them both to last a very long time because yeah. they're, they, they're built the right way. And yeah. um, it's, 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 it's a very easy analogy to understand. What I love to own a Range Rover, absolutely, it's a very, <laughs> very cool car. But I know that my yeah. Toyota is gonna be, um, is gonna outlive it and, and yeah. give me less headache. <laughs> yeah, nice and reliable. I love that. That's cool. <laughs> Toyota, love it. Um, <laughs> Back to, I guess, you know, the, the topic, the here. topic at hand. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how would you say that the payroll HR services, uh, software industry as a whole is evolving and, um, how might that impact some of your customers and, you know, are there emerging trends that you see, um, that small and mid-sized businesses should be preparing for? Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've. I've mentioned the term post pandemic a few times and it really has impacted our industry significantly. It's impacted everyone. Right. And, and post pandemic companies are, they're more remote. uh, They're more diverse at the same time. They're more lean. You know, you've heard all the reports of, of layoffs and tech layoffs and, and companies are really forced to do more with less. And at the same time, they're also managing a much more challenging workforce. So I talked about personas earlier. So you have finance and you have HR as your primary personas using a system like APS. Mm-hmm. And really what we've seen is that they, those two personas are needing to align priorities rather than being on separate sides of the fence. You know, they used to be that finance cared what they care about and HR cared what they care about. And those often didn't align because yeah. they often have different objectives. But now we've seen finance and HR needing to align priorities to make productive business decisions. And at the end of the day, the data in our system is very critical and it's usable for companies to make better financial and HR business decisions that keep the company in good standing, allow companies to grow and scale. Um, at the same time, we know we've all, we all use AI and really 12 months ago from an HR perspective, AR, AI was, was feared. Um, honestly, AI was looked at initially by HR professionals as a, a threat to the HR component in general, but yeah. now we've seen, we talk about HR and how it can help streamline, you know, um, job descriptions or it can provide insight into performance review trends. Yeah. It's welcome. And that data is allowing HR to make better decisions that keeps finance happy because we're keeping our margins and our labor costs in line. So. I've yeah. seen a lot of alignment and uh, it's been encouraging because now we can get finance and HR on the same page and work towards a similar goal. That's cool. Yeah. I feel like every conversation that I have about software, AI comes up in some way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. Um, and it definitely, yeah, it is very helpful. I've said this before and I'll continue to say it. I feel like it can help anybody in any different position or industry in some way. If you, welcome it. Like you can definitely take it and use it to your advantage. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, We all have to make that disclaimer joke that this is about to take my job, but I'm going to use it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, But I I think that AI can help us make more informed decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's like, Mm -hmm. again, I'll go back to the data in our system. We store a lot of data in our system. And so it makes sense for us to serve up our clients, these actionable insights so that they can go have to have a conversations, grow and scale it appropriately, 
and the AI is just summarizing some trends or analysis that they need to go and action on. Yeah, totally. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And also you, you mentioned remote work and, you know, the rise of flexible workforce and gig economy are shaking things up these days, as you talked about post pandemic. Um, so how do you see the role of payroll and HR management software evolving in that context, context, excuse me. And yeah, so it's, it's definitely not uncommon to see this trend as of late, but we've seen this yeah. in our target industries for years. Again, going back to finance, uh, financial professional services, nonprofit organizations, faith-based healthcare, there has yeah. historically been a need to track and engage workers that aren't traditional W-2. Um, so working so in depth with our verticals prior to this evolution, APS already has a mature software for this trend. Uh, so we're going to continue to prioritize non-traditional staff and how our clients continue to centralize data within our system. It goes back to centralizing data into a, into a single engine. It goes back to self-serve. And since we built 95% of our technology, we can be very flexible to the trends in the workforce uh, as they evolve over time. Nice. That's very helpful that you already kind of um, had that incorporated before the change began. That's very nice and helpful for you guys. Um, and also for people who are were quickly looking for something that could help them in that area. Um, yeah. So that obviously set you guys apart. Um, and, you know, the industry is becoming more competitive um, as time goes on. So how else, if there's other ways, does APS stay ahead of the curve in terms of innovation and customer satisfaction? I know you yes. touched a little bit on it earlier, but if you want to expand on that some more. Yeah, and I can definitely expand on it further. Um, you know, when I got into this industry, we had two main competitors. It was, it was ADP and Paychex. And really, yeah. if you look at our addressable market, we probably have 10 to 12 competitors, but the HCM space is very hot. I think that there are probably eight other competitors that we could look at if we're talking about the sub 25 employee um, addressable market. So the market has historically in the past five to seven years grown via acquisition and merger. So what this, what this results in going back to my analogy earlier is that there is, there is a, an array of solutions offered by our competitors. Um, you could have product offering that um, includes the employee life cycle, but also some tangible or I'm sorry, some fringe software offerings that that our competitors are adding to their portfolio to try to increase their their addressable market. And it just in t it, it intensifies the, the existing problem that a lot of our competitors were, were pieced together with different software components. So the features offered by our competitors has increased the demand for our services in general, but I have to go back to the, the Toyota versus Range Rover analogy. Yeah. Um, some, some, some things are just trends and it doesn't make sense to, 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 to acquire a company and piece it together to your software to try to make it work for your customer. Yeah. Um, I think we stay ahead of the curve in terms of innovation and customer satisfaction by some of the items I mentioned earlier, um, continuing to prioritize best in breed service and technology, um, conducting those voice of the customer interviews, uh, yeah. engaging our clients. You know, Cindy, every time we release a new feature, we put it into what we call early access and our clients can test out and try these features. Nice. And when they do so, they tell us what they want to, what they hope to accomplish when they turn it on. Mm -hmm. And, and we're able to, to aggregate all of this client feedback and listen to our customers. And that's how we continually meet their needs. So again, going back to why do customers go out to market, they go out to market because they need to centralize, they need a better adoptable system. And, and why do they choose APS? They choose APS because they realize that through uh, our offering. That's great. Like I said before, listening to your customers and adapting is wonderful. <laughs> Can't really say much more than that, but that's great. That's awesome. That's right. Yeah. And 
If you could share a piece of advice, like one key piece of advice for a potential customer, what would that be? Um, you know, what do you wish that more businesses understood about managing um, their payroll and HR services? I love this question. Um, I would say understand the company that you're going to engage with. So what does that mean? Our software, when, when, a, when a company goes out and engages an HCM platform, that software will be utilized by every single employee of the organization. Mm -hmm. From the, the employee, they're going to, again, do their pay stub, clock in, request PTO, go through a performance evaluation. Um, not only that, but there are personas and stakeholders that need access to the data in our system. So bring stakeholders to the pre-sales conversations. Speak with references, read reviews of other clients in your specific industry or for, you know, controllers like you. Yeah. I definitely suggest going way further than sales conversations and, and vanilla demos. I suggest working sessions with stakeholders going through the, the actual problems that a company wants to solve and don't make a decision in a silo read reviews, speak with references, and make sure that um, you ask about the support model, uh, retention, overall satisfaction. Talk to new, uh, new clients. Talk to clients that have been with the company for five years so you can get the understanding of how have they taken care of you for five years. And if you're new, what was implementation like? Yeah. Love it. You guys heard it. That's the, that's the key piece of advice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, cool. In switching gears a little bit, but uh, you know, supporting a distributed workforce comes with unique compliance challenges. So, how does EPS Payroll help companies navigate that complexity across multiple locations? So, interesting enough, around sixty percent of our ARR, so sixty percent of our revenue, is associated with our clients that have multiple EINs and locations. Wow. So. Bottom line is the majority of our clients have a remote, remote workforce and or multi-location. Yeah. And so it's, we are solving that problem for the majority of our clients today. And I think about a few things. Um, one, user security permissions, allowing delegation and autonomy with guardrails. I mentioned self-serve earlier from an employee perspective, but self-serve functions as our employee and manager slash director solution. So it's, it's, it's not best practice to give different either location managers or regional directors access to all the data in our system. It makes sense to give them access to um, the information they need to see and to stream on the workflows that they're responsible for. Yeah. So we, so we accomplish that through our, our security permissions and through self-serve so we can open up the, the lanes that our companies, uh, that our clients need to travel in. And mm -hmm. as they're managing multiple locations, multiple states, they're seeing what they need to see and they're not distracted by what's not important to them. So um, our successful mm -hmm. clients empower users in self-serve to manage locations and regions very efficiently. Nice, that's awesome. That helps um, keep things nice and easy, I'm sure for like you've talked about for people to just log in and understand exactly what they're looking at and what they need to see. That's right. And cool. uh, I'll say that our, our mission statement at APS is to make yeah. payroll and HR easier and easier is a key word. Uh, mm -hmm. Our president said we chose that instead of make making payroll and HR easy because it's never easy. There's, <laughs> there's a lot to managing the workforce. Yeah. But our aim is to make it easier, more streamlined, and more effective so that our clients yeah. are, of course, satisfied with us, but also able to spend an appropriate amount of tactical time leveraging our technology so they can spend more time being strategic and helping the business grow. I love that. Easier. That's mm -hmm. great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, another, another thing that is becoming very important um, to companies is, you know, companies are putting a 
more increased emphasis on employee well-being and engagement. So how do payroll HR solutions like yours help companies better support their workforce in that way too? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And um, both gener generationally and through the more remote workforce, um, there is a need to make sure that, that employees are satisfied and that they're productive. And so mm -hmm. there's, there's the, kind of the trendy conversation and I think the more tangible conversation. So yeah. um, in, to make employees feel engaged, self-serve has evolved over the years. It started off as a way just for employees to clock in and look at their pay stuff. But now um, our clients benefit from items like uh, a, a news feed, a daily digest email that shows managers birthdays and anniversaries for team shout outs. Um, we've also leveraged uh, text uh, message engagement through our system so that our users can send text message for maybe things like inclement weather or just shout outs or company events. Um, but if I, if I look at the more tangible side, there's, uh, there's an offering within our system called workforce planning. And what workforce planning is, it's really a pillar of our software. And workforce planning allows our clients to understand trends and analysis that might lead to flight risk or dissatisfied and unproductive employees. So for example, we can take uh, data around uh, performance reviews, um, uh, pay inequality, um, PTO trends, and we can uh, essentially leverage to our users, hey, you may want to engage this group of employees. We've seen a downtrend um, in their performance. This employee uh, is more on your, um, your higher paid but lower uh, performance scale, so there's some disparity there. There may be some pay inequality um, right here with this specific department. So where we find more value is serving up that analysis to our clients so that they can have tangible engagement rather than maybe, you know, uh, a brag board or um, yeah. giving someone a gold star. <laughs> yeah. But we try to marry both. And I hope that I'm making sense. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes total sense. I, I like how you split that up into kind of two different um, sections or areas because both I think are important. And I think going on your first point, especially these days with a lot of remote employees and stuff, people mm -hmm. do really look to kind of that culture and how, um, you know, the engagement is within um, the, the employees. Right. And then also having all of that um, <clears throat> information that comes up, like you said, being able to identify where there's little gaps between uh, performance versus, you know, all those different things that you touched on, um, the, the pay gap, all that stuff. That's very useful for the, you know, management side looking at things. So that's right. it makes a lot of sense. And those are very, very important things. Yeah. I mean, that's I'll cool. tell you, even as an employee here, um, you know, my leaders get um, insight into anniversaries and I, I love the shout out. So, you know, yeah. there is, there is a huge component to recognition of staff. Um, yes. You totally. need to, to make sure your company uh, honors, respects your, your service to them. And mm -hmm. we have, we, we love those solutions because our clients can stay engaged. I think from the analytics perspective, our system can essentially tell our, our customers, information you're not going to get by, by surveys. You know, we yeah. just, we're going to see the, the data and the trends. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what's really been shown as, as actionable. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. That's super cool. Um, so this kind of could maybe tie back to what we talked about a little bit earlier, but for, you know, a small to mid sized business considering a solution, what are the key factors that they should consider to ensure that they choose the right platform for them specifically? Right. So I, I would say solicit pain points from all the teams affected by this change. Mm -hmm. So if you're unhappy with your current vendor, you're looking to switch, or maybe you're going to use an HCM for the first time, as I mentioned earlier, every employee will use this system and different personas have different priorities. So yeah. I would say solicit the pain points and the objectives from all the teams affected by the change. 
And then secondly, make sure you understand how the solution will work and how it will work for those stakeholders. So don't just rely on the fact that company X offers this feature, uh, prioritize working sessions. Any of any vendor in our space will would love to have working sessions and show how the system works. But I would highly recommend understanding the pain points and bringing those stakeholders to the pre-sales conversation. And in addition, understand, I wish I could say this with in all caps, understand what implementation looks like. Um, the, the, the pain to, to implement a system has to be you know, lower than the pain of not making the change. Yeah. Uh, but no one likes to go through implementation, often has a level of anxiety associated with it. So we highly suggest asking the different companies you're looking at, what does it look like to implement? How will the data be transitioned? Is there yeah. parallel uh, testing involved? What does the company build look like? How do you train my users? How do you guarantee adoption? And seeing what happens after you say yes and sign is very, very important to understand, okay, will this company set me up for success in implementation mm -hmm. or will I sign with the sales team and then I'm just on my own? Yeah, totally. Yeah, those are definitely good points to think about. Mm -hmm. And as companies are focusing more on personalized and streamlined ex employee experiences, how does APS facilitate the creation of tailored payroll HR services across different locations in employee types? I know you've kind of touched on the different employee types, but if you want to expand some more. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, the, the, the bottom line is it goes back to self-serve. And yeah. you probably understand that the, the payroll process never stops. It's cyclical, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a pay period starts, you've got attendance, you have PTO requests, you have new hires, you have open enrollment, there's a break, the payrolls process starts over again. And so, you know, I think companies have to understand when they're using a software, can, can you set up the process and workflows and access at the corporate level that logically flow down to self-serve? And if you can do that effectively and you know you can grant access to different teams and users, then you can have a very streamlined process. If yeah. on the other hand, there's different software systems like pieced together and it's not going to result in, in, in streamlined employee experiences, it's, it's going to result in yeah. frustration. So yeah. um, I'm not going to beat the, the, the dead horse too much more, but um, a Toyota runs because it was designed the right way. And some other car companies out there, may, maybe they look really nice, but they'll be in the shop, you know, six times in your first year. And when every employee is affected by the HCM company that's in place, those complaints can be uh, amplified and yeah. there can be a lot of wasted spend because to be transparent, the, our services aren't they're not cheap, right? And 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 we're in the market or the the, the price range of, of all of our competitors, but you don't want to make the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. Have unhappy employees, unhappy stakeholders, and you're you're spending X amount per month. Yeah. So um, again, it goes back to just being very diligent in the in the pre sales process and yeah. uh, understanding what company you're working with. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And to kind of start to wrap this up, uh, looking ahead, do you guys have any exciting new developments or anything we can expect, you know, from APS payroll, any new products, features, major updates, that sort of thing? Well, we're constantly evolving and, and yeah. really at APS, we're focused on enhancing our user experience by going back to our mission statement. We want to make payroll and HR easier. And so we're always exploring new ideas and innovations to make day-to-day -day interactions with our technology efficient and intuitive. So we do have some exciting updates in the works and we can't wait to share uh, what's coming. So I would say this, stay tuned. Okay, so it's a, it's not released yet then to come. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the great thing about, about APS, well, one of the great things is that since we own our technology, we're constantly yeah. evolving it because yeah. you know we want to we want to be the best out there, and uh, totally. I'm I'm proud to work for a company that hasn't just 
said, hey, we've got a great system. Let's go on autopilot. No. Yeah. The needs are changing. The market's evolving. And we want to be there to support our clients as they grow and just manage today's workforce. Awesome. That's great. And for people listening and who are interested in learning more about APS payroll and then also, you know, keeping an eye out for those updates to come, uh, where can they find some more information online? Absolutely. So our, our website, www.apspayroll.com. Um, you can click contact us and get added to our uh, marketing email list. You can also subscribe to our blog and get notified. Uh, we're also on social. So if you follow us on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter slash X, we, uh, we highlight our, our product advancements and just where we are as a company, how we're helping clients in those key industries. Um, and I'd love to, to connect with any of the, the listeners out there that want to learn more. That's awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time and just talking about APS payroll, teaching us a little bit more about what you guys do in the industry as a whole. And thank you all for listening to the Slashdot Media SourceForge podcast. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the upcoming B2B podcasts that we have for you. Thanks, Sydney. Yeah, thank you.